Oh, hey. Hi. Somehow we hit a thousand subscribers. Suddenly this feels like a real channel. So I guess it's time to get cracking on some content. All right, here we are. Episode 3. Last time we went on our first night raid and got some loot. This time we'll take a look at how to make early game combat a whole lot more manageable with our primitive weapons. As usual, I'll be using a new character on the latest experimental version just to keep things up to date. Our stats are the same and I've got more or less the same items we found in the last two episodes. If you're following along at home and can't quite find the same things as me, don't worry. I'll be showing off a couple alternative options as well. We've slept off last night's injuries. We've had some breakfast and now we're ready to get started. We dropped our cudgel at some point last night. It's not in our bag, so we'll press capital V to open the list menu. Here we can press tab to toggle between viewing items and creatures in the area. We'll tab over to items and hit forward slash, then type cudgel. We can see it's over here in this big pile of stuff. We'll hit W and wield the cudgel. Then we'll head out to a well-lit area and open the crafting menu with ampersand. Press tab until you reach the practice panel. Practice actions are very effective at raising skills, but often come with requirements like books, skill levels, or tools. In this case, we need a point of melee skill and our cudgel to get started. Since we've got both, we're ready to go. We press enter and wait around while our character practices swinging their weapon. We'll be prompted to stop once we gain a rank. Just to be sure, we'll choose yes. Now let's open the app menu and have a look at our skills. Melee is currently two. If you're playing along at home and you went out last night, it's possible you'll be at 3 now thanks to the fighting you did. We're not, so let's get back to our training. This time, when we're prompted to continue, we'll choose to stop, as we know we've reached 3 ranks. We now have 3 melee, which affects our accuracy and blocking ability. Additionally, since we're using the brawling style, this skill level unlocks the feint maneuver which means that any time we attack and miss, we can now perform a feint, which will half the move cost of that attack. This is hugely helpful when fighting evasive creatures and will just generally help us defeat enemies more quickly. If we go back to the practice panel, we'll see that melee is now browned out. That means we can't learn anything from it anymore. It would be great if we could train our dodge skill too, but that would require a ball. We don't have one, but we can add it to our shopping list. Now that we've got three melee, we'll be able to deal with ordinary zombies pretty easily. We find a zombie out on the road and bait it back toward us. Once we're sure we've got it alone, we post up and start pressing tab. Keep an eye on the message log. Notice how it's not fighting back? We got all these hits in and it didn't even get to swing at us. Our cudgel has rapid strike, which means we're making many attacks at double speed, and it's also got precise strike, which we can use now that we've got three melee. Precise strike can stun an enemy any time we score a critical hit, and rapid strike greatly increases the amount of attacks we can make in the same amount of time. Since we have a chance to stun with every hit and stunned enemies don't get to attack, this means that our offense is also our defense. Many blunt weapons have abilities like this, which is one of the reasons I find them so easy to use. As long as we manage our stamina and don't get surrounded, we can keep enemies on the ropes all day. But there are other kind of weapons, right? That's true. And while we have very limited resources right now, we certainly have what we need to make a spear. Spears are an excellent way to make your life easier in Cataclysm, and we can already make several kinds. However, because we haven't got many tools, we're really limited to just a few types. Here we see the wooden spear and the knife spear. There are two versions of the wooden spear, and presently they're identical, but I expect this might change at some point. In the current version of the game, the fire-hardened spear is faster to craft, while the regular one can be made without a fire going. There are several entries for knife spears here, representing different levels of complexity in the design. The simple version is the most basic kind, and it's basically just a knife tied at the end of a long stick. It's flimsy and will quickly break, but the damage is much better than with the wooden spear. So to review, a wooden spear will last longer, while a simple knife spear will do more damage. But these aren't your only options. If your fabrication skill is low and you don't have time to grind out crafts to raise it, the long pointy stick is very easy to make. 
It's terrible that beggars can't be choosers. There's also the spike on a stick, which is like the knife spear, but it requires a spike, and unlike the knife spear, it can't be upgraded. You can craft a spike with a hammer and a chunk of steel, so you can make a pretty decent spear even if you don't have a knife. We do have a knife, so we'll be going with the simple knife spear. We need some string and a long stick. We found some string in a house we looted last time, but if we need more, there's an easy way to get it. Walk over to a window, preferably one positioned away from your work area and your NPC, and press E. You'll be prompted to tear down the curtains. Doing so gives you a sheet, a long string, and a stick. We'll haul that stuff back to our pile. We still need a long stick, so with our cudgel in hand we'll go out to the forest and have a look around. This is a young tree and it's the best way to find long sticks. Press S to smash it until it breaks. It'll usually drop one or two, which we can haul back home. To get a cotton patch, we press capital B to open the butchery menu and cut up our sheet. Now we can pull up the crafting menu and make our spear of choice. And it's finished! Mark my words! This drill will open a hole in the universe! And that hole will be a path for those behind us! As before, we want to bait this enemy away from its friends. Spears are much heavier and slower than our cudgel, so it's especially important to try to keep from getting surrounded. When the enemy is one tile away, press F. This is the firing reticle. With a spear, we can make adjacent attacks to opponents as normal, or we can use this to make attacks up to one tile away. We're faster than a basic zombie, and we can choose to run or use terrain intelligently, while it will always stumble toward us in a semi-straight line. This means that we can just kite it and never get hit. We can even use the tab key to automatically make attacks at the spear's maximum range. For many players, this is THE strategy. It's effective, but there are a few things to consider. 1. Reach weapons cannot use most techniques at pull range. While we can still faint, most techniques from our martial art and weapon will only work if enemies are directly adjacent. The spear and all of its techniques work just fine in melee, but be aware that many spears lack the types of techniques we saw in the cudgel and will therefore be worse at defense. This is fine if you want to stay out of the way, but it's not always a guarantee. 2. Most spears are big, heavy, and slow. We're currently using one of the lighter spears, and it's still four times heavier than our cudgel, which means it will drain stamina much more quickly when we attack. When accounting for the cudgel's rapid strike, the spear is also about four times slower. It does a lot more damage, but just remember that this comes at a cost. 3. Play to your strengths. Spears work best for characters who can move quickly, have a lot of stamina, and have decent perception and dexterity. Most of them do piercing or in some cases cutting damage, which is heavily reliant on critical hits. Characters who focus more on strength may get less out of them, though you should always experiment to see what works best for you. That about does it for primitive melee weapons. You may have noticed that we didn't cover cutting weapons or unarmed combat. That's because cutting weapons aren't really craftable in the early game. You'll have to find a sword or an axe somewhere. Unarmed combat, on the other hand, is highly situational and usually requires knowing one or two martial arts on top of brawling. It's much more advanced gameplay, so I'll cover it another time. And that about does it for this one. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody again for all the comments and subscribes, uh, for sharing your experiences, for the advice. For the next video, I think we're going to look at doing some early game ranged weapons, but after that, I would be interested to see what people want to know about. What parts of the game are really uh, frustrating you out there. This game is just so huge, there are so many directions you could go in with a tutorial series like this, and I would really love to know what people think. See you soon.